All right. All right. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Praise the Lord. Wake up. Welcome. Welcome. Wake up and welcome. We, we thank the Lord. Praise the Lord out there in Facebook and also everyone in the Zoom room. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. We thank God for another Sunday morning, Sunday school. We get closer to the Lord, closer to his word. We thank the Lord for everyone that's joining us on this morning. Like everything else, uh, how we should start is with prayer. Uh, so I'm going to ask you all, any prayer requests at this time? Any prayer requests? Any prayer requests? Yes, keep the Ross family in prayer for the passing of uh, Angela Ross. Uh, the Drew family, the, the passing of uh, uh, Jacqueline Drew, uh, Tondra Cahill, of my family, the Dotson family, the Unsaved, the Unconcerned, PCCM Ministry, and Body of Christ, and Katie. Katie. And now you. Any other prayer requests? Continue to pray for the unsaved portion of my family. Let's continue praying one for another. Let us continue um, praying for Pastor First Lady in the ministry. And let's pray for the homeless and the sick and the shut in. Praise God. Well, I actually continue to pray for me and my family, an uh, unsaved portion of our family. Um, continue to pray for all those that are bereaved. Uh, pray for the bullying that's going on in schools. Uh, the young man, 17 years old, uh, was found dead in, in the wooded area. Mm -hmm. Just keep them, uh, keep that family in prayer, the Jones family. Also, uh, yeah, Jones, a uh, co-worker of mine's mother, uh, keep her in prayer. Amen. Much to pray for, many to pray for. Even though this virus is going on, a lot of people are coming down with uh, I don't know if it's some type of flu or what have you, but uh, it's not COVID. But uh, about three people on my, in my group came down with, you know, co-workers, a uh, bad headache, you know, stuff like that. But it, it, they tested negative. But uh, but keep keep them in prayer. Yes. Yes. All right. If there be no more prayer requests. Let us go to the throne of grace. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for your loving kindness, your multitudes of tender mercies. Lord, we thank you, O oh God, for another day, for this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for just waking us up this morning. We thank you, Lord, for uh, just giving us uh, a mind to serve you, Lord, and a heart that loves you. And Father, we ask you the portion of our strength, Lord, that we use it unto your glory. Father, we ask you to forgive us for our sins and transgressions. Please blot out our iniquities. Oh God, we ask you right now to allow us to come boldly to the throne of grace. Lord, you heard the prayer request, oh God. We have bereaved families everywhere. Lord, they mourn, oh God, the loss of their loved ones. I ask you right now in the name of Jesus, touch them, oh God. Put your loving arms around them, Lord. Wipe away their tears. Oh, God, give them a peace that surpasses all understanding, oh, God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask you to touch the sick and the shut-in everywhere, Lord. Oh, God, all the nursing homes, even Cadia, Lord, we ask you to move upon each and every resident there, Lord. Oh, God, whatever they need for, Lord, in healing, Lord, touch their feeble bodies. Touch their minds, Lord. Oh, God, touch their families, Lord, that they frequently be able to see them, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask you to touch each and every household that's represented in Sunday school, Lord, even those who may be on their way. Oh, God, special uh, prayer for uh, Elder Bostic, special prayer for uh, uh, Minister Isaac, Lord. Uh, we ask you to uh, touch uh, Elder Melton, Lord. Uh, every every uh, lay member, Lord, every person in their respected places, Lord, but have your way in the Sunday school, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Touch our unsaved family members, oh God, those un who are unconcerned, Lord, touch them right now. Bring them to repentance, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, that they have an awareness, Lord, that <clears throat> all hope is not lost, Lord, that you are uh, the Lord of our salvation, Lord, that you came to seek and 
and save those who are lost. And Father, we thank you, Lord, for continuing to do that, Lord, and you do it through us, Lord. Oh, God, use us for your glory, Lord. You said that we are, uh, we've been bought with a price, Lord. And Lord, these things we do because it's our reasonable service, Lord, and you've given us the great commission, Lord. Touch us, oh God. Strengthen us, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Have your way in the Sunday school lesson. Let me teach with the clarity and authority. And Lord, we ask you right now to let the participation be high, Lord, even those who are on Facebook, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Now, Lord, have your way in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I ask uh, if uh, Deacon Edwards could uh, recite the Apostle Creed. I believe in God, the Father, Almighty Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, uh, his, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born unto Virgin Mary, suffered unto Pontius Pilate, crucified, died, and buried. On the third day, he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and there he sits at the right hand of God, the Father, Father Almighty, from which he should come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy, Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, and uh, communion of sin, the resurrection of body, and life everlasting. Amen. We thank the Lord. Uh, we thank God today is the fifth Sunday. That's why you find me teaching on this morning. Um, we only have maybe three to four a year, our fifth Sundays. Uh, so we, we thank the Lord for that. I asked um, Oh, the Melton, did everyone hear uh, that I was teaching? That's why they weren't on. We, we thank the Lord, but I was only joking. I know you all wouldn't do that to me, um, but you all used to your Sunday school teachers, and uh, you get me today. You get a double bonus. You get me today at 9 and, and today at 11. Look at God. Hey, and, give me a double portion. <laughs> <laughs> we thank the Lord. But this is... Uh, all Sunday school lessons are good. Uh, it's as good as you you make them. You you uh, always line up the word with the commentary. Uh, so that's our disclaimer. Uh, we're we're coming from a, a an organized method of teaching. The Sunday school lessons are prepared for us, and we study them, and we go through them, and we structure them in a way where everyone uh, can participate. So we, with that being said, uh, Jesus arrests, Jesus arrests, my God. So many people still try to arrest him today, but they can't do it because when he got up from the grave, he got up with all power in his hands. We thank the Lord for that. We're going to be coming from uh, John 18, uh, verses 1 through 13. Uh, we, we thank the Lord for the golden uh, text on this morning, which is, 18.9 of John, uh, that's, uh, that the saying might be fulfilled, which he spoke of them which thou gavest me, have I, oh, I'm sorry, have I lost none? And that's, uh, again, John 18.9. We're going to start off with a um, scripture lesson text. Uh, everyone that can help, please help. Uh, I'm going to ask someone to volunteer to take the first three. Got it. One, okay, one through three, and then four through six. Can somebody grab that? I'll do it. Four through six. Okay. Yeah. Yes. And then we need seven through eight. We're going to get everybody warmed up. Seven through eight. I'm going to take that. Okay. And then I need somebody to be very brave and take an extra scripture, 10 through 13. Okay, I will. Okay. Thank you, Mother. Okay. All right. Let's, we can go ahead and get started. All right. John 18 and 1. If Jesus has spoken these words. He went forth with his disciples over the brook uh, Ched Chedron which was a garden into which he entered and his disciples. And Judas also, which betrayed him, knew the place. For uh, Jesus oft times resorted thither with his disciples. 
Judas then having received a band of men and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees cometh thither and, lantern, and, and with lanterns and torches and weapons. For Jesus therefore knowing all things that should come upon him went forth and said unto them, whom seek ye? They answer him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said unto them, I am he, and Judas also, which betrayed him, stood with them. As soon then as he had said unto them, I am he, they went backward and fell to the ground. Mm. Then asked he them again, who seek ye? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I have told you that I am he. If therefore ye seek me, let these, let these go their way, that the same might be fulfilled, which he spoke of them, which thou great gavest me, have I lost none. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and smote the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Mal Malchus. Then said Jesus unto Peter, put up thy sword into the sheath and cup sh sheath. The cup which my father has given me, shall I not drink it? Then the band and the captain and the officers of the Jews took Jesus and bound him and led him away to Anus first, for he was father-in-law to Caphras, which was the high priest that same year. Right, we thank the Lord for y'all reading the scripture there. Uh, we're not gonna break it down, try to break it down. Uh, now we're gonna go through the lesson outline. I think that's the best way, but one of the words I pulled out of this, and, and it's heavy in, in this portion, uh, Jesus was arrested based on betrayal. Betrayal. Betrayal can be something that uh, can damage, uh, in our times, national security. Betrayal can start wars. Betrayal can uh, allow couples to divorce, families to uh, be rendered. Uh, from from being families have a divisive it's a divisive uh, method of of dividing and conquering and and uh, it's a selfish act but I wanted to talk about that a little bit in terms of when I looked in uh, up the the word and talked about and we're going to see this throughout the story uh, and we've heard it in terms of uh, Judas okay it says uh, the signs, these are some of the signs of, of betrayal, even before, before a person betrays you. Uh, trouble recognizing and expressing or managing their emotions, anxiety, depression, and other mental symptoms. They will have nightmares, physical pain or stomach distress, panic uh, attacks, thoughts of suicide, difficulty trusting others, and attachment issues. And that describes Judas. <laughs> uh, Judas was having all those things going on with him. Um, you think about what happened to Judas. He committed uh, suicide, right? Uh, he had attachment issues because he was amongst Jesus' disciples, even though J Jesus knew he had a devil amongst them. Uh, he had attachment issues. Typically, when people have attachment issues, they do things out of the ordinary. Uh, but Jesus is all-knowing and, and was all-knowing, so it wasn't a surprise uh, to, to Jesus. And then difficulties in, uh, in trusting others, I, I think he had that. He didn't, he didn't trust Jesus enough to, to believe who he really was. And, and, and there were some other issues that, that Judas was going through mm -hmm. that, they cause them not making excuses for them, but when betrayal happens again, uh, man, uh, when spies betray this country, uh, there's grave danger to the citizens of, of this country. So uh, it was a it, it was a, a reason that Jesus was arrested, but 
whatever the devil meant for bad, God meant it for good because it was all in God's plan. Amen. Uh, so let's let's get into the lesson. Uh, we're going to look at the the aim for today. Today's aim: oh Acts. to know that Jesus was never guilty of any sin or wrongdoing. Yet he was arrested when Judas Iscariot betrayed him. So again, the facts is making it plain: Jesus had no sin; he had done no wrong. Uh, but because of all the claims and all who Jesus said he was and who he is, uh, the people around him had issues that he was basically calling himself the Messiah. And Judas, again, was an instrument used to get him arrested. The principle is to recognize that Jesus willingly bore our sin and to note that he understands the pain that betrayal brings firsthand right there. He got arrested because of betrayal. And we all know that what happened after they arrested him. Uh, we thank the Lord for the application to this lesson is to always stand for Christ, even if it is unpopular with those closest to us. Always stand with Christ. The other disciples could have been a part of the plot if Judas had come amongst uh, them and start whispering, but thank the Lord that that didn't happen. The Bible don't, doesn't show that it happened. It could have happened, but they stood, the other 11 stood with Christ, uh, even when one went against him and brought in uh, some very powerful people. Uh, it was a portion of, of, uh, of uh, army that came to arrest him. It wasn't like two or three people. So anyway, let's get into the lesson. Um, I just want to read uh, a portion from, from uh, the, the teacher's portion. It says, attacking a devout man while he is in prayer is repulsive. But Judas' conscience was seared at this point because Satan had entered into him. And this is straight from, from scripture. If you, if you want to reference that, you can look at Luke 22, 3. And it's, you know, the devil don't care because you go to church and because you pray and because you, you, you love God and, and you know God loves you. He doesn't care. He's going to continue to attack. He's going to continue to attack. Uh, and, and again, it is repulsive when other people are used of the devil and they know you're a, a devout Christian. Uh, that you don't bother anyone. The devil don't care about none of that. Amen. He doesn't. He doesn't care. But the person that should care is you. Stand, even when you feel like you can't stand. Stand anyway. And then the other thing that uh, I read in the teacher's portion that I highlighted, even while facing arrest, uh, the shepherd protected his sheep. Because he told them, hey, look, you're after me. Don't, don't mess with them. Let them go ahead. You're after me. Because Jesus knew that his time had come. Uh, so he, he's still in the shepherd mode, uh, trying to protect his disciples. We, we thank the Lord for the lesson on this morning. Uh, any any uh, comments before we go on? Yeah, just, <clears throat> that comment that you just made, is, 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 um, it reminds me... Uh, you know, things we see on, you know, these wildlife channels, you know, one, one instance I saw where this, this snake was, uh, was trying to attack, uh, these kittens, but the mother, uh, cat put her, put herself in harm's way to protect her young. Uh -huh. Like you said, Jesus, even in the midst of the betrayal, knowing that he was going to the cross, he, he was, his, his goal was to protect his disciples. That's um, right. Let these men go, you know, yeah. Put the wrong way. But, but the, the, the thing about it too is that when you know you have invested in a vessel or have vested interest in, in something, you're going to protect and preserve um, mm -hmm. what you believe that is not the full. So I look at it this way Jesus knew that his disciples were going to be the ones who 
carry this word out, continue to preserve the gospel. So it was very important that that didn't get cut off, right? Oh my God, we've been in trouble, right? Um, so, so again, protection, because even, even in the church today, we need to protect the gospel. We need to proclaim the gospel. We need to defend the gospel. The word said so. So we have to, we have to make sure we're doing all those things, that we're doing all those things. Amen. And thank the Lord. All right, let's get into the, the outline. Uh, the lesson is a good lesson. I mean, it's to me, it's not one of the longest lessons, but it's, it's a good portion of content in it. So let's get right into it. Treachery, that, that's treachery, the betrayal. Treachery in the garden. Can somebody uh, get somebody to read uh, the first outline, treachery in the garden, the first outline, a familiar hangout, a familiar hangout. Can somebody read that? Jesus and his apostles left the place where they had celebrated the Passover and made their way to a familiar spot. This was the Garden of Gethsemane. Since this was a place frequently placed frequently by Jesus and, and disciples, Jesus knew it was where Christ would be after the Passover meal. Well, like it's, it, it just read, it's really self-explanatory. This uh, Ju Judas knew where the, you know, the, the routine, he, uh, he knew where they were going mm -hmm. after um, the Passover meal. And um, so I just want to add to that, like, you know, the devil knows where you are oh. at all times. Like he says, he goes to and fro, seeking up and down the earth, seeking who he may devour. That's right. So just being of the devil, he, 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 well, like I said, and also a disciple, he knew the routine. Yes, the, the, the devil and his imps, they know yeah. when we do our devotions. That's yes. why he throws up all kinds of obstacles. He knows when we get into our word that he's going to make sure that we're tired or there's a distraction. That's his job um, because we, we do it. If we do it routinely, he, see, he sees what we do. But guess yeah. what? We got to do it anyway. Jesus and his disciples met at this place to get, a, I call it a place probably of solitude, to get away from everyone and to do, you know, corporately to pray. And, and I'm sure it was a teaching moment for Jesus. And in this place, Judas knew at that time where they could find Jesus. Mm -hmm. So, okay, very good. The hostile intrusion. Can somebody read that? John 18, 3, for those who follow and don't have a Sunday school book, it's uh, referring to John 18, 3. Somebody read that for us. Concerning Judas' motivation for betraying Christ, there are numerous, numerous theories. At the very least, greed was involved. While 30 pieces of silver may seem <clears throat> a, a paltry sum for betraying an innocent person, these, like Judas, do not think this way. Beyond the money, he seemed to have been disappointed that Jesus had no plans to overthrow Rome. His false worldly expectation for the mm -hmm. Messiah mm -hmm. certainly played a part in his action. Legal system invariably makes a distinction between unplanned homicide and those that are premeditated. Judas voluntarily went to the Jewish religious leaders early in their week and, contra and contacted, no contract, contracted, excuse me, contracted to betray Christ to them for money. John 8 3 says a band of men arrived to arrest Jesus. Taken at face value, this means that a large contingent of soldiers was involved in Christ's arrest. Since it was Passover, more troops were stationed in Jerusalem. Since uprisings were more likely to occur because of the influx of foreign, foreigners on the occasion, 
the officer would have been under the supervision of the chief priest since the priesthood was largely associated with the, with the Sadducees. Mention of the Pharisees indicated a collaborative, collabor, collaborative effort between these otherwise adversarial fact, factions of the Jewish San, Sanhedrin. Sanhedrin. They set aside their mosque for the mutual goal of ridding themselves of Jesus. Since it was night and the torches, and since it was night, the torches and lanterns were needed by the soldiers. They had no need to carry weapons since the Savior would offer no resistance to their intention. Okay. Anybody? You guys, so what's what's been read? Yeah. Um, no, it's just that you know some things that stuck out to me. Uh, one, uh, the uh, you know how they came together, even though they didn't agree. This, uh, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they didn't agree on a lot, but they can come together. Uh, you know, the enemies can do. You know, when 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 they have a common goal against you, they can come together and they can band together to try to do things against you. Uh, and you know which they, which we see here, <clears throat> and that has been you know true throughout uh, you know life. You know the enemy don't care. You know if if they don't if, if they come against you in different forms and different fashions, even if they don't get along, <clears throat> but they, their one common goal is to what they were to to come against Jesus. And even also <clears throat> I mentioned about the six hundred men. And as we gonna don't want to get too far into the lesson, but the weapons of our warfare are not common. They can come against Jesus with weapons. They didn't need to. Right. Right. And, you know, you know, I don't want to get too far in the lesson, but I think it's in the uh, the next one with a staggering answer where Jesus said, I am here, and they 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 fell back. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't have weapons, they had weapons. Six hundred. Yeah. But anyway. So, so, yeah, so the, the thing that uh, stood out in this outline, this portion of the outline, <clears throat> in, in terms of the greed factor that kicks into people to do, they'll do anything to get what they want. Think about this. They didn't call Judas to come there. Judas, <laughs> Judas knew they were after Jesus. Mm -hmm. And he said, look, I got some information. I'm not saying this is not Bible, but I could just imagine. Hey, look. I got some information for you where this Jesus is. In fact, I've seen him many times. He didn't say he was a disciple. Guaranteed he didn't say that. But look, it, for, for a mere, uh, he probably sold himself short, 30 pieces of silver, I can take you right to him. I know where he's going to be every day. Just think about that. Think about <clears throat> someone that you, you're supposed to be close to and for, for the loss of, of words, they sell you out. <laughs> they, they sell you out to a point where it means your life. And that's, that's exactly what I saw here. And it was premeditated. He knew he, he knew he was going to do something. He knew he was going to betray Jesus. He just came up with a way to, <clears throat> to do it. The other thing I, I saw in this in terms of the, the, uh, uh, the men, do you think it would took it took six hundred men to come after one man? That's why I said the devil don't care. The devil don't care. Uh, the world is enmity to God. So guess what? Because we serve Him, the, the world's not going to love us either. Mm -hmm. The world's going to attack us. You know, attack us. But because of that one man, who is God. Uh, we sh we shouldn't have to worry about that. What the world does, you know, greater he that is in us than he that is in the world. That's that's what I get. And then lastly, uh, again, uh, Elder kind of touched on it. So they came bring, uh, bring me with weapons to arrest an unarmed teacher. <laughs> you get a you get a picture of a teacher, right? Their focus is not on fighting. Their focus is not on uh, uh, coming up against the army. They're probably not trained in, in any type of self-defense, most of them. But yet they came with 600 soldiers 
to take Jesus in. Anyway, so demonstration of power. Demonstration of power, John 18, verses oh, 4 oh, through 9. Oh, um, Pastor, on that last one. Did yes. they know of his, I mean, they knew of his power to bring 600 people. They knew of Christ and the other thing that he have done. When, when, when you think so? I, I, I say they underestimated his power. Okay. They thought they knew his power because when Jesus spoke, hey, look, here I am. <laughs> here I am. And what happened to them? Like you said, we'll get into that portion in the lesson. But I think they underestimated his power. They didn't understand it. Remember, okay. we're talking about flesh against spirit. And, and the flesh doesn't understand the things in the spirit world. And that's what we were looking at uh, was happening. The authority of God the Father shown through his son. When he spoke, he spoke with authority. So, anyway. I, I see uh, something else in this commentary saying yes. that his false worldly expectations for the Messiah's, Messiah certainly played a part in his actions. And yes. we all know that uh, everybody... They was expecting Jesus to come and set his kingdom up, That's but right. instead Jesus came preaching and teaching and healing. So I guess I'm um, saying uh, Jesus. I mean Judas probably says, "Oh, this man ain't about nothing." Right. Oh you know, yeah. Let's get Definitely. rid of him. Mm -hmm. Definitely. You, you you hit it right on the head. He he probably did. Not that yeah. he probably his action showed that. Totally. Yeah. Oh, yeah. His action showed that. So, yeah, so, so just like in church today, everybody's not saved. Everybody's mm -hmm. not in there with the common goal of, of living it, <clears throat> excuse me, living it and sharing the gospel. They, they, they're just there to occupy. Mm -hmm. And we can look at it that way in terms of, of Judas. You know, yeah. Judas, he was there, but he wasn't there because like you said, oh, Jesus came to set up his kingdom. What's, what's going on? He's teaching and he's, well, that was him setting up his kingdom. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> they didn't get it. That was him set, setting up his kingdom. Yes. Yeah. In relation to what you were just saying, Pastor, you know, people come to church, they, they come with the, like Judas, with the worldly expectation. They come and they hear somebody tickle their ears, tell them, you know, this prosperity preaching that they're going to receive these, all these blessings. And when they don't hear the preaching that way, they say, oh, this church ain't about nothing. They want to go to a church where they can get the feel good type message. Um, not, the, not the message that's going to prick their heart and make them repent. They don't want to hear that kind of message. Uh, um, like, like I'm, I'm not getting fed. <laughs> yeah. you're, not, you're, you're, not getting, you're not getting fed what you want to eat. You eat sugar all the time, you're going to get diabetes. If you, if you <laughs> eat certain things, you're going to get sick. The a coded message. Um, something else uh, Deke said, uh, you know, uh, looking at the, the miracles that Jesus mm -hmm. did, I know it all ain't, it's not written, but it's not written where he went against the army of men and, you know, these miraculously destroyed them. Um, so for these 600 men to be afraid, what was it? What was it afraid that Jesus was going to heal them or cast out devils? Because uh, uh, that's what he did, you know. <laughs> Those are the miracles that he's shown, you know, to, you know, to a lot of people. Uh, feeding five thousand, you know, it was miracles where he destroyed any any people, you know, far as individuals. So these six hundred men, uh, scared, but what were they scared? <laughs> yeah, they wouldn't have been scared. But again, they didn't understand what power he had. They weren't scared. Exactly. Um, it, that's yeah. not why they bought six hundred. But just in case some others got involved, I'm oh, sure. Yeah. Um, that's why they brought, it, it was an intimidation factor too. Remember back in those days, that's why they put people in lion's dens and let you watch the lion devour people. It mm -hmm. was more or less, not just to kill them, but to intimidate everybody else to look at orange. So <laughs> everybody <laughs> looking at them like, whoa, I ain't preaching no more of this gospel. <laughs> so yeah, so it served more than just the purpose of putting him to death or, or, or arresting him. All right, so demonstration of power, stagger, a staggering answer. Can somebody read that outline? 
being the eternal son of God, nothing that was about to occur came as a surprise to Jesus. <clears throat> Undaunted by this hostile uh, rabble, he, stopped, he, he stepped forward and asked, who seek ye? Of course, he knew they were seeking him. Jesus had a, a, um, agonized in prayer concerning God's impeding will for him. And he was resolved to go into the, to the cross for a day, affirming that he was indeed Jesus of Nazareth, the one whom they sought, the Lord was willing to be arrested and fulfill the plan of God that would provide salvation to the world. It was because of the joy that was set before him that he was willing to suffer and die. It is hard to imagine that one of Jesus' own disciples, after years of listening and teaching and witnessing his miracles, could now stand with those planning to murder, planning his murder. Such is the power of Satan to deceive and corrupt Judas <clears throat> had, been had been blessed with the close fellowship of the Lord of glory himself during his earthly ministry. Yet he was now transformed into the son of, of uh, the son of hell. Vigilance against the deception of the enemy of, the, of our soul is uh, constant imperative. Regarding Jesus' reply to the arrested, arresting force, note that both the verses five and six in King James Version has the word he in italics. This means that the word is not found in the original Greek text. Jesus actually answered, answer was I am, as mentioned previously in the phrase, if uh, is often used throughout John's gospel to introduce key statements about uh, Christ's identity and mission. Jesus used this phrase to identify himself as Yahweh, the one true God who appeared to Moses at the burning bush. In, a, in, in, in an amazing demonstration of the, of the power of that divine name, the text tells us that when Jesus answered them with the de declaration, I am, the arresting rabble staggered backwards and fell to the ground, literally knocked off their feet. At, <clears throat> and this was just a small uh, intimidation of his divine identity. When he came again, when he came again, he, he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth. This scene is one of the most dramatic in, of the many dramatic scenes in the gospel. On the one hand, we see Judas and his army represented re representatives of the world which are tainted with evil in its religion and its politics and relies upon physical force to achieve its objects. On the other hand, we are confronted with Jesus unarmed, unbefriended, and apparently helpless to the face of overwhelming opposition. But having at, the, at his command invisible divine resources in virtue of his complete obedience to his heavenly father, in cons consequence, his victory is assured in the last assault upon a citadel of evil. Citadel of evil. Uh, I know we, a lot, but we kind of talked about part of it already. Um, By the way, we're not letting you read no more. <laughs> and, uh, unless, you read, unless you read from the student book. <laughs> um, I know that's a lot of <laughs> and, uh, the part that that kind of stood out to me it, it quoted in hebrews 12 and 2 you know the joy that was set before him jesus didn't run he didn't hide he didn't say he, he just spoke up boldly and bravely uh um and said i am he you know so you know like i said you know he he willingly you know uh was wanted to you know were willing to be arrested and and willing to go to the cross you know um that was his assignment. Mm -hmm. His time had come. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, it leads right into um, the, the Passover and, and everything else that was forthcoming. So um, you wasn't going to find any resistance. You wasn't going to find any, uh, hey, let's run. They had, before they had, you know, Jesus would heal and say, shh, don't tell anybody, go, you know, uh, send no more. And he would send them off and tell them, oh, man, I, I, I met a man I, I, I couldn't see. And one day he gave me sight. Oh, man, I, I met a man. I was crippled. You couldn't wait. I could imagine them 
not being able to wait to tell somebody about the miraculous healing that, that Christ brought into their life. Uh, the woman at the well, you know, the woman with the issue of blood. I mean, we can go on and on, the ones we didn't even know about. And, and Jesus knew that it was going to get out, but he would ask them not to say anything because his time hadn't come. Well, here, his time had come. He was not going to resist, uh, uh, resist the arrest that was uh, imminent. So anyway, anybody else? Um, I had a, a comment about um, them falling backwards. Mm -hmm. It says a uh, demonstration of power when Jesus spoke himself. Yes. Saying, I am, I am he. It was so much power. They couldn't look on Jesus because the Bible said no man can look on God and live. So it said they fell backwards. And, and they fell going towards Jesus and, fall, and fell backwards. I, I picked up on that too, mother, because. When that term was used, I think Elder just mentioned that it was used when Moses yeah. confronted God and he couldn't look in the face of God. He could right. only see God's hinder part. Yeah. That's when that term was used. I and you tell him, I am that I am. Yeah. And when that was used, I mean. The continents on Mo now, I'm not talking Ten Commandments on, on the movies, but they said his continents changed, Moses did. It started transforming him. Just think, uh, just imagine, not even being that he still didn't see the face of God. Mm -hmm. He could only look at the hinder part. Now you have God in the flesh, and he speaks with authority. That was divine authority. See, some yeah. of us. Some of us are supervisors and managers over people. We have that kind of earthly authority. But I'm talking about divine authority. You can look like a bum. You can look like somebody that doesn't look uh, uh, royal or kingly and, and speak with authority because it's not about the flesh. It's about the spirit of God that dwelleth in you that gives you the authority. And when Christ spoke it, when he spoke, he said they fell backwards, meaning they hit the ground. Yeah. They hit the ground. Mm -hmm. and, and originally when I when I started reading, I was like, I wonder if any of them fell into worship when they felt the power. <laughs> oh, my God. Think about this when the Bible says every knee shall bow. That, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. All right. This is good stuff here. We got, let's see. All right, we're doing good. We got 10 minutes. Uh, so let's read an extension, except for Elder Melton. Don't get him to read it. An extension of protection. Jesus. Go ahead on, Alicia. Who's that, Alicia? Okay. okay. An extension of protection. Jesus had flattened them with the single word since their sudden loss of vertality seemed to leave them speechless. Jesus again asked them, whom seek ye? In a further demonstration of his authority, Jesus commanded the, the throne to allow his disciples to go their way. The reason Jesus commanded his persecutors to let his disciples go was to fulfill the prophecy he himself had spoken about a year earlier in John 6, 39, 6 and 39. Of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing. Hmm. The extension of protection. Anybody before I jump in? So it, it says, in some sense, Jesus was toying with his adversary. I don't believe he was toying with them as the. <laughs> I just because this was a serious matter, right? If you know you're about to get arrested, you're not going. You're not going to. You're not going to tour around with the situation, right? Uh, the commentary said he was toying with them. I don't. I don't believe he was, because this was a serious matter. Jesus wanted to show them that he had the he had authority by speaking, "I am," right, and 
in regards to, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to phrase it, bring it home to now. If you're about to get arrested, you're not, you're not gonna joke around. You get serious. You want a lawyer. You want, you want people on your side. You want witnesses. Jesus didn't go through none of those emotions. Okay. When they came after him, it says the reason Jesus commanded his uh, persecutors to let his disciples go, we talked about it earlier, was to fulfill the prophecy that God the Father had given him. So that's that was his main focus. He never lost the the his the 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 objective to do the Father's will. So that was part of it. That was part of it. Um, so again, God has absolute sovereign and foreknowledge of all events that come to pass. It, this didn't catch Jesus by surprise. Would you all agree? Yeah. Yes. He, he didn't need the weatherman to come up and tell him it was going to snow tomorrow and how many inches. He didn't need none of that. He's all knowing. Uh, and, and that's the thing about the devil. The devil is not all knowing. He's not omnipresent. He doesn't have the power. He's not God's opposite. Everybody knows, knows that, right? The devil is no way God's opposite, but he is the adversary. He is the enemy. He is someone God created. Yes. Um, so no, no way is he the opposite of God. So anybody else? Uh, you mentioned in the beginning about uh, from these disciples, the gospel had to go forth. So yes. <laughs> that could be uh tie in with this too. Yeah, absolutely. The right. So he he had to protect them. He was protecting yeah. them that, that, yeah. that it would yeah, take me. I'm the one. Take me, but these let them go cuz they had they had nothing to do with what I'm here to do. Mm -hmm. So take me. Yeah, he was he was in protection mode, the good shepherd. Amen. Okay, the last outline acceptance of the father's will oh, we kind of running right into that right acceptance of the father's will john 18 verses 10 through 13 we're going to finish up with that an impulsive blow john alone informs us that it was simon peter who attacked the servant of the high priest with a sword the fact that peter took the initiative to defend Jesus without being told to do so is certainly in character with his impetuous nature. <laughs> <laughs> My question is, what, what was Peter doing with a sword? And they just oh. been, uh, so, yeah, and they just been out for the Passover and everything. Where did he get this weapon from? <laughs> so. So I, you know, I, I always think about things like that too. The Bible doesn't clearly tell us, right? But I could only imagine if they're if they're walking from place to place, uh, they didn't have to, uh, um, you know, they didn't they didn't have a way to protect themselves. So even though they were walking with uh, a God in, in flesh, um, I'm sure. They hadn't. They had not received the full knowledge of who they were really walking with. I'm, I'm gonna say it to you that way. So any type of animals or people that would attack, uh, they didn't have in their minds that they would be all right. Jesus did. He knew. Even on, on the on the ship, you know, when the when he went down to take that nap and the ship started tossing, they ran to him. Oh, don't you care if we? not uh we perish uh you know and, and so there they felt he could do something but they really didn't know what he could do mm -hmm. what i i guarantee you what they were thinking like you got us on this ship in this <laughs> in this storm now what uh the bible doesn't say it that way but jesus spoke to it so going back to what you said mother i have no idea where he got that sword from but i do know Somebody like Peter didn't need a son or a, a, a sword or a gun. <laughs> Just think if he had a gun, right? But but Jesus rebuked him. Yeah. When he did it because he was trying to get him to respond as someone that could reason, uh, versus not in this case, but 
in any case, you, you, you don't get into your flesh and react in your flesh. Uh, in fact, Jesus took the man's ear and put it back on, healed him. Um, but, but yeah, <laughs> Peter was like that. <laughs> he was very <laughs> impulsive. Uh, but it's funny how Jesus gave him the keys to the kingdom. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, mm -hmm. so, so Peter, he had to use Peter's personality. That's why uh, yeah, I guess. When, when, when people try to change you, God knows who he called. God does mm -hmm. the, the, the transformation. God mm -hmm. does the changing. Don't let nobody change you. That's all. That's all. Uh, I mean, but yeah, this is, that's a good question. I don't know. Uh, they were strapped. It's not like they all could have been strapped. I don't know. It doesn't, yeah. say, it doesn't say so, but. Peter had a sword. He could have snatched the sword from somebody. I doubt that. But, you know, yeah, that's, that's a good question. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we got three minutes. Rebuke and recommitment. Uh, I can go ahead and read that one, and then somebody be ready to read arrest and removal. Rebuke and recommitment. Obviously, Jesus did not need Peter or anyone else to defend him. For Peter to do so under these circumstances was both futile and foolish. Jesus therefore rebuked Peter, telling him to put his sword away. In Luke twenty-two fifty-one, 51, Jesus adds, in essence, no more of this. And in Matthew 26, 52, 52, he tells Peter, for all they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. No weapon forged by human hands would be necessary to defeat this army. He already spoke. I am. They hit the. They hit the. Uh, they hit the ground. But you know, just think if he said, "You all perish," it would have happened because he was speaking with divine authority. Um, that's all. Anybody else, real quick, need to say anything on this? Okay, let's go to arrest and removal. If somebody can do that. We'll we'll uh, close up for today. Arrest and removal. While Caiaphas was the currently ruling high priest, Jesus was taken first to Annas. Annas, is that right? Annas. Sounds good to me. Father in law of Caiaphas, although Annas was no longer the official high priest, he still weighed, he still wielded great authority in Jerusalem. It says, in fact, he was very likely the driving force in the plot against Jesus. Hey, one thing about the arrest, we know this, when people are arrested, one person um, is not going to indict you. Typically, they're going to get uh, buy-in from everyone. And I think, I'm thinking about today when people are naturally arrested for crimes that they do, they get enough evidence to arrest them. They get enough on this person uh, to remove them from office, like impeachments of presidents. They just don't do it instantly, right? But in this case, Jesus had no sin. He done no wrong. <laughs> but yes, they, they want to arrest him right away without any type of uh, indictment other than he presented himself as being the son of God. In fact, being the, the uh, living God that everyone saw and that he was the Messiah. So anyway, anybody else on this, the rest and removal? Uh, I just got one thing to mention. We were just talking about the sword, right? Uh -huh. um, this was after, um, this was basically Jesus kind of told Peter, remember when we told Peter before the cock crows, you're going to deny me three times. Yes. Goes on. To Jesus went on to say that, uh, you know, when he sent, the, sent them, uh, sent them out without a person, without a script and shoes and lack of anything, anything. And it, now he says, he says, and they said nothing. And then said he unto them, but now he that have a purse, let him take it. And likewise his script and he that have no sword, let him sell his garment and buy one. For I say unto you that this is the this is written, this is written must yet be accomplished in me. And he was uh, reckoned among the transgressors for the things concerning me, I uh, me have an end. And they said, Lord, 
behold, here are two swords. And he said unto them, it's enough. So somewhere in point in time, you know, after the betrayal, after the denial or gotcha. before Jesus had told them to buy some sword. That's why they had, Peter had one. Okay. I missed that. Thank you. Me too. <laughs> I had to, I had um, to look. I never, I, maybe I read it, but I, yeah, that's good stuff though. Uh, Mm -hmm. So, so mother, that's how that's how you got that that weapon. <laughs> well, he said after the denial. Well, no, this this was before it says he told Peter before, when Peter evidently before said before the denial. Well, this is before he told Peter before the cock crows, you will deny me, and then okay. he went he went on to okay. say, yeah. "Okay, yeah, that, that's interesting. <laughs> I didn't look into that too." Okay, well, I thank you. <laughs> I'm glad you came with the question. That's why I love Bible study and Sunday school yeah. because you yeah. you learn, you continue. I don't care who you are, you continue to learn. I never, I never paid attention to that. We yeah. walked, probably read it and never paid attention to it. And I know I've, and, and I'm like, you know, I it got me thinking, why did he have a sword? <laughs> yeah, right. right. They yeah. know that they had God in the flesh with them, so you know <laughs> what would he be called for? But it was in Luke 22 and 36. 2236. Well, that's good. That's good stuff. Before, so. Yeah. That, that's, that's good. Again, that's why I love yeah. for people to participate and ask questions and, and give comments because you, you, you just learn a whole lot when you do that. But anyway, I'm not, we're going to go ahead and dismiss. But uh, before we do, we ask anyone out there on Facebook would like to give <coughs> towards our Christian Education Sunday School. Uh, just give to our ministry. You can do so by going to Givelify, uh, look for Partakers Church of Christ Ministries, or you can go to our website, www.partakerschurch.org, and click on giving. We thank you in advance. <clears throat> and if you like to be a part of our fellowship, worship fellowship on this morning, you can do so by coming to 4516 Beach Road in Temple Hills, Maryland, and join us. Uh, man, I, I believe the Lord has something to say uh, through his people on this morning. Come and through his servant on this morning, come and join us on today at 11 a.m. We look forward to having you again, 4516 Beach Road in Temple Hills, Maryland. Uh, we, we thank the Lord for everyone uh, attending and joining us on this morning. I'm going to ask uh, Deacon Edwards if he can uh, close us out with the um, with scripture on this morning. God bless you, everyone. Thanks for joining. All scriptures are given by inspiration of God and is proper for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Amen. God bless everyone. Hope to share what I'm All right. Thank you, everyone. God bless you. Be safe.